Hi, thanks for being in a new video. Let me tell you what I liked most and least about the Nubia Neo 2 in case you're considering buying it. So as always, let me tell you don't buy the Nubia Neo 2 without watching this video. Consider its launch price, which in Mexico has been 5,499 pesos. The reference price in dollars appears on the screen. Although consider that the prices here are not the same as those there. In fact, in unofficial distributors of Mercado Libre, you could find it even cheaper. So if you find it cheaper, several points I'm going to mention against it, we could forgive them. Remember that if there is something that I do not mention in this video, it means that the device meets within what one expects in its price range and you have the full video review available if you want to consult all the information. Let's start with what I like the most. The device has touch triggers, so you can map these triggers to any button that is on screen for a gaming experience that is totally superior to what other devices offer. Remember that this device is part of the whole same Red Magic family, so it inherited a few things in an entry-level device, which is awesome. The design is also quite attractive. Although it doesn't integrate RGB lights or anything like that, I think it does have a back cover that may catch the eye of several gamers. The screen has about 1 in 20 Hz in its refresh rate. Let's just say that still the expected in the range would be 90 Hz, so it stands out as well to have such a high refresh rate. This device also integrates stereo sound, which again, in the price range, we would still expect mono sound. Here the interesting thing is that for gaming, it is also a good match because you can perfectly distinguish whether the sound is coming from the left or the right in your game. This device also takes good portrait pictures. Even though it's not its main emphasis is photography, I think it does a good job. It also gives us a fast 4 to 1800x camera so you can get some pretty spectacular time lapse. The one-handed mode lets you choose whether you want it to be the whole screen or you want it to only adjust vertically. Something quite curious because almost all other manufacturers give you only one of these two options. Instead, in this Nubia Neo 2 5G, you as a user can choose which you prefer. It also features a charge separation mode. This means that the device is able to receive the voltage from the charger directly to the processor without going through the battery in order to avoid heating. So it is an advanced feature. It also has support for 5G networks. In this price range, we can still find some 4G models, other 5G models, so it stands out that it has this level. Something very curious is that it has FM radio without the need to connect headphones. The simple fact that it offers FM radio is something positive because there are many devices that do not integrate it, but in this case, the curious thing is that you do not even need to connect the headphones as an antenna, but you can perfectly listen to your favorite station like this. The performance of the Unisoc T820 processor is quite good for the range. I know that many people when they hear that the processor is Unisoc may get scared, but in this case, it is honestly one of the best processors that Unisoc has ever made. It maintains good performance. It makes good use of the RAM memory which is 8GB and it has 256GB of internal storage. So it really performs quite smoothly in both applications and games. Even when exporting video we saw that it behaved quite fast. And possibly the most attractive thing is that it has a suite of gaming options that is exactly the same as the one previously integrated with Red Magic. So it's packed with features, add-ons, extra tools, everything to give you a supreme gaming experience. But let me tell you now what I didn't like. For starters, it doesn't have a headphone jack. And I think that in a device that wants to be dedicated to gaming, this is an absence that weighs a lot. The photo and burst capture is slow. As I anticipated, it is not a device that is characterized by having a very spectacular camera. But in this case, it does feel and is perceived a little slow. Despite integrating 50 megapixels, they are not really exploited neither in high resolution mode nor in zoom. So consider it to have a 12 megapixel camera or something, don't think it has 50. Also, it does not integrate an ultra-wide camera. This simply confirms to us that it is a device that is not very focused on photography as it will integrate a good camera and the rest of decoration. At the time of recording video, I noticed that the focus remained blocked. It did not react. So it is not a recommended device for video recording. It integrates Android out of the box. I think that in full of the 1024, we could ask for it to arrive with Android 14, considering that we are not so clear how many times it will be updated. If you buy it in Mexico with official distribution, it will come with a lot of pre-installed Telcel. Although this obviously could vary in other countries, and fortunately it does allow you to uninstall these pre-installed applications, but it is something a little more annoying. The heating of the device when playing games is definitely high. For example, when we played Genshin Impact, it got up to 50 degrees, which is an extreme considering what we've seen with other devices. So, 
While it may give you still good performance for its range, the heating does matter. And lastly, screen recordings can come out with black stripes at the top and bottom. So if you wanted it to make gameplays, you will need to edit the video before publishing it if you want it to look better. But if you already bought it, let me know your opinion and how much it cost you. For the moment we have reached the end of this video, I hope you liked it. If you did, you know you can let me know, and I'll see you next time.